I want to thank Toronto for raising me to love movies. Hello, hello! Everyone has a big imagination. All of us do. This is exciting. My first film to premiere here at the Toronto Film Festival. It's an exciting night. You are the most globally exciting festival in the world. Hello and welcome to the press conference for the new girlfriend. A few notes before we begin. This press conference will be streamed live at www.tiff.net and still photographs will be made available on the TIFF media site. Volunteers with microphones are in the room to assist you with your questions. Please remember to identify yourself and your media outlet. Please note, no photography is permitted during this press conference. Only the pre-approved wire services may take photographs and we ask you to do so from behind the first row. Um, if you could take a moment to turn your cell phones to silent. Our moderator for today is Henri Behar, and it is now my pleasure to welcome the director and cast for The New Girlfriend. Thank you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the press conference for My New Girlfriend. Um, I'll introduce the people who are here uh, on the panel with us. Uh, before I do that, uh, if you want to ask a question, please raise your hand a little bit ahead of time so that A, I can see you, which is not very easy, and more importantly, so that the lady's equipped microphone can get to you a little bit ahead of time so you have the microphone when the time comes. Thank you very much. Um, well, my new girlfriend was shown this morning. A few, the, the, okay, okay, stand corrected, the new girlfriend. And uh, sitting next to me is director François Ozon. Sitting next to him, an interpreter, Fanny St. Pierre Tanguay, because the two people who are sitting next to her uh, want to make sure that they understand your question and that you will understand their answers that will be possibly in French. And so, um, next to the interpreter, the very bold Anaïs de Moustier. Next to her, as both David and Virginia, the incredibly bold Romain Duris. <laughs> and the question probably will be, uh, the first question will be addressed to you, Francois, and perhaps to the two actors. Um, actually, perhaps to Romain. When you got the script, or at least the beginning of the script, the idea of the script, I don't know at which stage you got it, did you go, what the hell am I going to do with this? Yes, maybe, but I, I wanted to, to go, you know. When, when I was, when, no, he, he called me before reading the script, and f when Francois called me, and told me I have a project, I have a, a film, uh, and maybe you will love it because I knew, I know that you you, you, you like to play a girl, a woman. Uh, I knew that I, I will do it. Even the story will be, I mean. What made you think of Romain and at what stage did you call him? Um, I think it was ve very quick. Uh, first, I began to meet many French actors, and I asked um, ask them to wear wig and to to uh, to do some makeup and all these kind of things. And it was a way to see if they have a real feminine side and if they were able to accept and assume that. And uh, because I knew 
uh, Roma, it was a dream of him to, to play a girl. I asked him, and he had such a pleasure doing the makeup uh, and doing all the things. It was uh, obvious for me to, to, to ask him to do, to do the film, but to the make the film. The script was already completed, or did, did Romain and no. Anaïs help you change things? Uh, I didn't change so many things, no. I think, uh, I think the, the, the script was already done. So no, no <coughs> input from you guys? Uh, yes, yeah, so uh, no. Of I mean, of course, before, when beforehand. you have the actors, you have to change, to, and it's a work we do to, to, together. So we did some tests, we did some, uh, some work on the scenes, we were, we, and, and um, the, the creation of Virginia was a real work. So we tried to, to make him sexy. Yes. <laughs> okay. Um, for the part of Anaïs, which is less obviously acrobatic, no offense to you, Romain, uh, did you, Anaïs, at some point say to François Ozon, maybe that moment I can push it a little further? Did you have that kind of input? Um, sorry, I'm going to talk in French. Um, non, moi j'aimais beaucoup l'aspect justement euh, moins un, spectaculaire de mon personnage et c'est ça qui m'a plu, c'est que c'est un personnage très silencieux, euh, qui est très souvent dans l'observation, qui est témoin de, de l'éclosion de Virginia et, et justement en tant qu'actrice, moi c'est mon plaisir en fait d'avoir une grande part d'imaginaire et d'avoir une grande part de, de jeu dans les silences et, et dans les... On est dans l'observation des partenaires, donc euh, j'étais ravie. No, I actually like playing less spectacular characters. I like to play with silence, it, with characters that observe. And here, my character was the witness of the birth of Virginia. As an actress, I like to play with imagination, to play with silence and observe. This is something I really like to do. Je me suis aperçue en, en jouant le, le personnage de Claire qu'elle était beaucoup plus riche et beaucoup plus euh, profonde que, que ce qu'on pouvait penser à la lecture. And I realized while playing Claire that this character was a lot richer and deeper than you could think when you were reading the script. Le problème est si je vous dis presque inverse. But I'm sorry. Uh, it's almost a little bit on the reverse as far as your character are concerned, Romain, insofar as one step out of line as Virginia, you were dead and the film was dead. Uh, si, si tu ne trouvais pas la, le, le pas exact, si tu faisais un pas euh, mal à propos, le personnage de Virginia était mort et le film avec. Maybe, but... Uh Je pense que, I'm going to say it in French, je pense que on avait quand même un, un espace assez large où on pouvait se permettre d'en de, faire parfois trop et parfois moins et que ensuite naturellement on trouvait le, le, bon, le, bon, le bon degré de, soit d'humour, soit de, 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 de sérieux, soit de dramatique. Donc euh, je ne me suis pas senti euh, euh, engoncé ou... ou ou coincé dans une, dans, une, dans, une, dans une ligne à suivre très, euh, très précise. À chaque fois, ça pouvait déborder et c'était facile de gommer. Euh. Et puis, on était très vigilants avec Françoise, justement, sur cet aspect-là, parce que c'est vrai qu'un homme qui fait une femme, tout de suite, il y a le, le danger euh, de faire too much, quoi, de, de faire la folle un peu. On ne voulait pas ça. I think that we actually had the space to play with it. We could be allowed to do more, to do less, and it came naturally. We could um, change the degree of humor, of seriousness, of drama. So I didn't really feel trapped in some sort of uh, strict protocol I had to follow. We could really play with it. But it's true, uh, with Francois, we had to be careful. When a man plays a woman, there's the danger of uh, doing crazy things, so we had to be careful about that. François, do you have an, an instance or an example of what Romain just said, more specific in terms of uh, how you worked it out together? Um, I think the, the, je, je aussi parler français, parce que tout le monde parle français. 
pas être plus simple. Euh, je pense que le, le rôle permettait vraiment beaucoup de liberté, puisque le film parle de liberté. Donc c'est un personnage qui se cherche. Et donc les maladresses de Romain en tant qu'acteur, en tant que Virginia, David en tant que Virginia, tout se mélangeait. Donc on pouvait se permettre dans certaines scènes, il en fait naturellement trop. Par exemple, quand il veut aller au supermarché et qu'il met cette robe rose et cette perruque à la Véronique Alec, c'est sûr que c'est un petit peu trop. Mais on, il, fallait, voilà, il pouvait l'assumer. Donc on savait qu'il y avait des scènes où on pouvait jouer avec ça et d'autres où, au contraire, il fallait qu'il soit un peu plus sérieux. Donc on, le, le film permettait d'exploiter de, tout, toutes ces parts de, de, de féminité, d'humour de, euh, et de sérieux. Donc c'était ça qui était, qui, était, qui était agréable à faire. I think that this character, with this character, we could play with the freedom. Virginia is um, a character looking for herself. So um, the quirkiness of the actor, when the actor is not so sure of what he's doing, it actually reflects itself in the character of Virginia. For example, when she goes to the supermarket and wears this pink dress and this wig, a bit like Veronica Lake, and we can really see that, uh, that uh, it's too much in this scene. But with some scenes, it was okay to do too much like this. Some scenes, we had to be more serious. This film allowed us to play with, um, with humor and with seriousness at the same time. Then I will ask again a question about this transformation, then we'll take questions from the floor. Uh, take, taking the pink dress and the Veronica Lake um, wig, and throughout his various attires, the work with the hair and makeup and wardrobe must have been essential. Of course. Can you, both Romain and, and you, comment on the work with uh, perruque, uh, habillage, uh, costume? Je commence, Romain? Vas-y. En fait, il y a une vraie évolution du personnage. Au début, comme beaucoup de cross-dresseurs, au début, ils se cherchent. Et en fait, les références qu'ils ont, c'est soit leur femme, soit leur mère, la plupart du temps, et ils n'ont pas forcément très bon goût. Donc on a joué un petit peu là-dessus. Au début, Virginia porte les robes de sa mère, elle porte, elle, donc elle n'est pas forcément au meilleur goût. Et ce qui était intéressant dans le film, c'était de montrer son évolution vestimentaire, euh, de perruque aussi et de, et de maquillage, pour la montrer à la fin avec un look finalement assez naturel. Et on se dit à la fin, elle s'est vraiment trouvée. Et c'était ça, c'était ça l'idée. So we really see the evolution of this character. First, the character is looking for herself. And here, the reference, as in with many cross-dressers, is a mother or a wife. So at first, the taste is not so good. We can see Virginia using the dresses of, uh, of her mother. But through the film, you can see the evolution in clothes, in wigs, and makeup. And at the end, you really can realize that the character has found herself. Romain? Oui, non, mais je juste ajouter que c'est vrai que c'est drôle qu'à la fin, elle ait besoin juste d'un jean et du, je crois qu'elle a une veste en haut et qu'on ne se pose plus la question sa féminité elle l'a à l'intérieur et, et elle est encore plus femme juste en jean euh, et avec une, une nouvelle perruque brune enfin, qui lui ressemble peut-être plus au, au naturel quoi. donc euh, c'est drôle de voir du, 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 du point de départ où il essaie de mettre les habits de sa maman et, et à la fin où il est en jean il est plus moderne et il, est, il a une féminité qui est à l'intérieur combien de temps a pris le travail I'm sorry Um, it is true, if I may add, that it's really funny to see that at the end the character is wearing jeans and a simple vest. And yet the character really found her femininity. And she's more like a woman. And she ha even has a brown wig that is more natural. So it is funny to see that from beginning to end uh, we see this evolution. At the beginning wearing the mom's dress and at the end wearing modern attire wearing jeans. It's, it's very intriguing, again, to pick up on the makeup, not only the clothes, but the makeup and, and the wigs, how, how very specifically detailed the work has been on your face, yeah. uh, which is almost something that you do with the makeup person, even if he's not around, in a way. Am I mistaken? It's the first time, it's my first film which where the, the makeup wasn't disturbing me for two hours, you know, in the morning. I was like an actress, I think. <laughs> no problem, I, uh, I liked it, actually. So uh, it was the part of, uh, of Virginia. Okay. I was the actor of the film. Yeah. <laughs> ah. A bit. Question from the audience? Anyone? Okay, then we'll carry. Okay, there's a question over there. 
Oh, you have one here. Okay, go ahead. Can I? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Art Pace from India Abroad newspaper. Question for the director, Ozone. Uh, what did you find most compelling in the short story? And why has it, why did it stay with you for 20 years or 15 years? Could you, could you repeat the question? Yeah, what did you find most interesting in the short ah. story? And it, was, it has been with him for about 15 years, the short story. Please keep the it short up. story, because it's adapted from a short story by uh, Ruth Wendell. Uh, yes, I, I read this story a long time ago, and uh, when I read it, I wanted to do a short film of it, because it's about 15 pages, and uh, it was before my features. And actually, I didn't, fi didn't find the right cast at this time, and, uh, and I didn't have the producer, the money, so I forgot it. And, uh, but I had still in mind this story, but I was looking during all this time uh, for, um, for a key, uh, I, I, say, je, I speak in French, j'essayais de trouver le, la manière de, de, de l'adapter, parce que la nouvelle de Ruth Rundel est une, euh, est plus un, un peu comme un, un thriller, un thriller, et la, la nouvelle se termine par un meurtre, le personnage d'Anaïs tue euh, Virginia, alors que moi je voulais raconter une histoire d'amour, donc j'ai mis du temps à comprendre ça, et c'est pour ça que je ne l'ai fait que, que maintenant. I was looking for a way to adapt it because the short story was actually more of a thriller and it ended with a murder. The character played by Anaïs was ac actually killed, Virginia. And I wanted a love story, so that's why it took me time to adapt it. Who has the mic over there? Sorry. I'm sorry? sorry okay, no, no problem. But I'll, I'll, pick, up, I'll pick up on... on, on the characterization of, of the woman of uh, Virginia. Uh, for quite a while, uh, Francois, you have been making films around different types of women. Mm -hmm. Were it only eight women, mm -hmm. uh, huit femmes. Uh, and I, when I first saw uh, Romain's transformation, I was going, did he go for Fanny Ardant? Did he go for... Uh, this, act, <laughs> this actress or that actress or that impersonation of, I didn't know whether you, there was some kind of a model for you, Omar. Uh, I remember to see the, your publicity, you know, with uh, um, uh, Charlie's Theron, Dior, okay. you know? Yeah. Dior's Adore. Dior's Adore. <laughs> And I remember that it was strong for me, this image of the woman getting out of the clothes and walking and begin to be nude at the end, that, uh, I remember, I think. So, uh, or Gina Roland, you know, I, 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 I wanted to have strong image of uh, the femininity, you know. But after, uh, it was just in my mind, you know, after. Mm. Uh, Did Charlie's uh, for sure. walk influence yours? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It did. Sorry? La démarche de, de, de Charlize ouais. Theron ouais. dans George Ador ouais. a, a influencé ton, ta façon de marcher ouais. dans le film. Definitely. Okay, that's a new one on me. <laughs> that's fine. Um, non, mais j'aimerais aim, un peu revenir uh, sur, sur cette espèce de, de série de portraitures de femmes. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead, translate. <laughs> I'd like to come back on the topic of different portraits of different women. That you made. En fait, ce film au début s'appelait Je suis femme, I am woman. Et en fait, je me suis rendu compte que ça allait amener une espèce d'ambiguïté. Tout le monde allait penser que la femme, c'est Romain. Alors que pour moi, celle qui devient vraiment une femme, c'est le personnage de Claire, qui au début n'est pas vraiment à l'aise avec sa féminité. C'est ça qui m'intéressait, c'était ce paradoxe c'est que cette jeune femme fait aussi un trajet. Euh, le personnage principal, d'une certaine manière, est clair. Euh, le personnage de Virginia n'est qu'un révélateur. Euh, le personnage de Virginia, finalement, elle assume très, enfin, David assume très vite son désir d'être autre. Je ne sais pas s'il est vraiment femme, d'ailleurs, parce qu'on peut penser à la fin qu'il a gardé son, son sexe, 
puisque le personnage de Claire en plus est enceinte, donc c'est beaucoup plus complexe que ça. Mais je pense en tout cas que le personnage de Claire est vraiment devenu une femme à la fin, c'est ce qu'elle chante d'ailleurs. First, the movie was going to be called I am woman. But there was going to be some ambiguity. People would think that it was a romance character that was becoming, that was a woman. But actually, in this movie, it's, it's the character of Claire that is becoming a woman. At first, she's not comfortable with who she is. And she is uh, really going through an evolution. And the character of Virginia is helping her through that. The character of David really assumes his otherness. And we don't really know if he um, became a woman, really. He actually kept his uh, sexuality because we see at the end of the movie that Claire is pregnant. You have perhaps to make uh, clearer to an, an Anglo-Saxon audience the choice of the song that is played and, and sung by Yes, it's the, the Je suis femme Nicole Croisi. It's a very popular French song of the 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was quite obvious to use it for, for, for the film, and I wanted to use it twice. Once uh, in the, the nightclub uh, with a, tra a real travestite, and at the end I wanted uh, uh, the character of Claire could sing it. It was important to have this, uh, this change. Is for French audiences, forgive me for coming for jumping in here. Uh, this song, "I'm Woman" by Nicole Croisi, is as popular to a French audience as Carol King's "You Made Me Feel Like a Natural Woman." It's that much of a hit, so it's an immediately recognizable song and most appropriate in this case. Maybe in the French Canada they know it. No, in Quebec, Nicole Croisi. I don't this know. This is Toronto, <laughs> dear. Ah, yes, I know. <laughs> Um, question? No? Okay, we continue. Um, you shot part of it, of the film, in Canada. Yes. Although it is supposed to take place, I have no idea, anywhere. I don't know too. Okay, perfect. It's anywhere. It's like a fairy tale, you know, I didn't want to place the story uh, in, a, in a specific country. I wanted to do something universal, and uh, because I wanted to to shoot the film during the autumn, autumn, yes, For I wanted to 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 show the light of uh, of leaves of trees during the autumn because it's a film about transformation. So I thought it it could be a, a good idea. Uh, for me, the, the the most beautiful light is in Canada, and uh, so we we came to shoot just two weeks for the exteriors. Uh, of the houses of, uh, of Virginia and, uh, and Claire. What's so specific about, I mean, yes, thank you very much, it's beautiful. What is so specific about its beauty that attracted you? It's uh, the colors. Ah, okay. The colors, the colors of autumn, uh, the red. We don't have the same trees in France, and the light is quite different. So that, that's what interested me. Okay. What do, you, what do you expect the reaction of North American, or for that matter, Anglo-Saxon countries might be like? I don't know, you know, it's, you it's, the, it's the premiere. I haven't, seen f I haven't seen the film with an audience yet. It will be tonight at six, so I'll be able to answer after that. How do you feel about it, Omar, Anaïs? Yeah, we are waiting for the reaction. We can't wait. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess in that case, all the best Thank for you. tonight. Thank, Thank you. I'm not going to say the L-U-C-K word. All the best to you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. <laughs>